Okay, I pulled the masking tape off that was here. And this back part will probably paint some kind of a dark deck color later. But, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, right now what I'm thinking of is uh, the inside of these railings all the way along here. Uh, I imagine that they w should be the same color as the outside. And this, this railing that you see right here is actually this one right here. And then this piece right here would be probably right about here somewhere. This piece here would be back here. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'm going to take, in, for a change of scenery here, I'm going to take a paintbrush and just do the inside of, of the deck before I paint this because I would sooner get deck color up on the railing just a little bit than railing color out onto the deck. I think that that you would notice the railing color on the deck worse than you would the other way around. At least that's, that's my opinion. Um, yeah. Now I think I shouldn't be calling these things here railings. Uh, I think in real life they were probably very, very heavy steel. And you'd be standing behind this thing looking out. You'd get a little bit of protection from it. It's not a railing. It's interesting to note that our model is different from this drawing that we're looking at right now. It's possible they're both correct. It could be changes were made. The hood was around for like 20 years or so. Yeah, I'm not going to be changing Trumpeter's model just to match a drawing. Now, I don't think I've ever done this before. And by that I mean putting the masking tape on my cloth or whatever. I don't know if when I peel this off if the gum is going to slowly work its way into the uh, cloth and I'm going to have a little dark mark there, but you know what? Who cares? At least I don't need to worry about this moving around now. While I was handling this thing just right now, I thought, is that a piece of sprue? I don't remember having to remove any sprue from this part. Or is this supposed to be a feature of the side of the ship? Now, if we look at the other side... Okay. Here's the same thing again in the exact same location. Um, let me just turn it over here. I think I'm going to just leave that on. I think it's I think it's a feature of the ship. I don't know what it is, but uh, yeah, I, I almost got my file out and was going to file that off, and then thought I better look close at that. This is the one we were using that I've thinned out. It's our number twenty-two. Now this is a brand new jar that I haven't opened yet. I just I just got through shaking it in the paint shaker. And uh, the reason I want to use a new one that isn't thinned out is because it is my experience that I can paint with a brush a lot better uh, if the paint isn't really, really thin. So uh, that's the plan anyway. And I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just start, start right here and just work my way all the way around. And of course, I'll have to flip this thing over. Uh, maybe we'll just move everything in just a little bit here. Put the lid back on. Don't want any unnecessary evaporation going on. And uh, just readjust here. You'll notice how when I <clears throat> when I stop it back down, 
the detail over here increases. I'll just I'll just go back the other way and show you the difference. Okay, now this is still sharp, but this is quite fuzzy. Now when we move it back down to F22, you'll notice that it gets a little sharper here. And it, it is my opinion that even though we do lose slight sharpness at the place that it's focused on, which was right here, uh, it's, it's still pretty good. And the, over, the overall looks a whole lot better. That's, that's my opinion. So a lot of you will have noticed when you're looking in, in the screen over there that, <clears throat> excuse me, that you, you, you notice I'm stopped right down to F22. Well, that's why. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Maybe I should give this another little shake because it's about 15 minutes ago since I, since I shook it. Okay. And we'll get on my three diopter glasses instead of the 1.5s. Okay, very, very gently here now. I want to try to not touch the deck. I think I've loaded my brush a little bit too heavy. Yeah, it's uh, having a tendency to want to creep on me. You know what, maybe I'll stick the macro lens on. Well, you can see that I've rearranged the furniture a little bit here. And a little bit of time has passed as well because I wanted to just check and see how the videoing that I just did turned out. And I'm happy with it. Um, that little camera there it's just a point and shoot camera. It doesn't shoot, it doesn't uh, video in 4K like this one does. And right now it's shooting in 1080p at 30 frames a second. It's not, it's not too bad, but it's naturally not as versatile or as sharp as this camera is. However, for something like this, it's acceptable. Anyway, we were going to put on the macro lens. I have probably done this a thousand times. Now, oh, this this cord here, it runs to the monitor. That's why when I turn this camera on now, you should see uh, it it light up over there, kind of. There we go. Now I don't want to be getting in too close or I'm going to paint right out of the scene. And we'll open up the lens wide open for focusing. Now I sort of focus uh, at, at a midpoint in the, into the scene. Then I'm going to close it all the way down everything sort of sharpens up. And as you know I do that so I can sync the videos up quite easily 
when I get these two 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 separate videos in the editing in the editing uh, program. Now I don't want this to end up being a tutorial on how to sync up the footage from two different cameras, but you'll notice I've got two different wave files going here. Each one has the three spikes. I'm just going to move the bottom one over until it lines up with the top one, and then they're in sync. Simple, right? And as you know, I do that so I can sync the videos up quite easily when I get these two 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 separate videos in the editing in the editing uh, program. Uh, <clears throat> I have to be careful now. I'm used to talking to this camera, and actually, I'm, I'll be shouting in this one, so I gotta kind of lower my voice here and just sort sort of switch the audio over as well. Um, I I think I can probably get in here with this. And uh, I don't think I need to use the extra light. It looks pretty good in the monitor anyway. I really enjoy videoing this. Prob probably, uh, uh, oh, my tape's letting go. I probably enjoy videoing more than I actually do building the model. But I, I, I am enjoying building the model. Uh, don't get me wrong. Okay, my other glasses now. now this time I'm going to try not to uh, load my brush up so much. I think I'm going to have to move everything closer to me here. It's just too far away. So I'm going to just have to reset. Anyway, you get the idea. I know that looks funny. You know, I don't know if I'm going to do two coats on this or not, you know, this brown, you know, from this deck tan showing through, that almost looks like rust. I mean, this, these things probably were rusty.
if I uh, rest the end of the paintbrush on my cheek here, I'm not quite as shaky. I can well imagine without looking at the monitor that the ISO has really jumped now because I've got my head in the light. Just for the fun of it, I'm going to look up and see what it says. 5,000. Fortunately, this camera does an excellent job at really high ISO. Okay, just going to have to readjust a little bit here so I can get in here and see this. You are really getting to see it live. I don't think I've ever done it quite like this before. Now the other side of this railing, or, or guard, or whatever it is, um, it, it will be sprayed. I'm just going to get the top here. Probably painting right out of the out of the view. Okay. Once again, that's how I do it. Now some of you camera buffs might have been wondering what little point and shoot was I using? Well, it's this one here. Not particularly fancy. Does the job. It's probably about five years old or so now. And uh, this thing on the bottom here, that's just uh, the adapter so I can plug it into my tripod. Anyway, that's it. All right, what do you think about maybe we just put this all away just for a few minutes here anyway? And uh, what I'll do is I'll finish painting the, the insides of the railings later off camera because I'm sure you're sick of that. And let's get our hull laid out here and uh, maybe take the masking tape off and see how it came out. But you know what? It, it might be a good idea to check and make sure that we don't have to put a second coat on. I'm uh, just going to check real good because once the masking tape is off, I don't think I'm going to want to bother. Whereas right now, it's still uh, pretty easy to, you know, to, to do a second coat. Anyway, enough rambling here. Okay, let's try not to bump anything. I keep forgetting how long this is. Alright, I guess we may as well start on this end. Uh, what do you think? Does it need a second coat? I don't think so. You know, you, you got to remember that the, the deck and everything is going to be covered with little details and everything so any any blotchiness or anything like that you may see here is uh, is not is not going to show and uh, not only that it uh, it might sort of act as weathering I mean sure you do a nice pristine job and then what do you do you smear weathering stuff all over it to make it look ugly <laughs>
Okay, now where's the end for this one? I know it's there somewhere because I put it on. Okay, this hull is still, you might say, scroogle enough that you can lay it on its side and don't need to worry about damaging any little ladders or anything. Okay, here's that little boo-boo we had before. I forget what it was that I got on there. I remember doing it, but I can't remember how I did it. Uh, maybe I can touch that up, or maybe it'll just look like weathering. That one came out good. Okay, where are the ends on this one? And that one came out good. This may not be the best way to do this, but I think it's going to work. And from what I can see, that one came out good. Now the side's going to be a different story. What's this way over here? It looks like it's furry or something. What happened? Now you just knew I wasn't going to be able to leave this alone. I have to stick the macro lens on. I guess it's all right. Well, folks, it looks like we're going to have to wait until tomorrow to get the rest of the masking tape off. I wasted way too much time with my artistic videoing here. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. And all being well, we will see you tomorrow.